Hello and welcome to Through the Mixing Glass. My name is Joel, and after many weeks of procrastination, we have reached the end of Highball Summer. The final drink in our summer series is the New School Gin Daisy. Some of you are likely pointing out that it's the middle of October and summer has long been over. Shouldn't I be making you a new fall cocktail? The answer to that question is yes. Of course I should be making you a fall cocktail right now. But I've already shot this video, so back to our drink, the Gin Daisy, specifically the New School Gin Daisy. We're gonna talk about the recipe in just a second, but I first wanna talk about where this drink evolved from. According to cocktail historian David Wandrich, the Daisy was first mentioned way back in 1866. It was a class of drinks known for being cooling, refreshing, and peculiarly tasty. The recipe that eventually makes its way into print in 1876 is basically a sour cocktail served with either whiskey, brandy, or gin, and orange cordial. As the years went on, travelers to Mexico found this recipe being served with tequila. Hmm, tequila, orange liqueur, and lime juice. What does that sound like to you? That's a margarita. Any Spanish speakers out there likely already know that the word margarita literally translates to daisy. So the drink we're making today started off as basically a gin margarita, but somewhere along the line, it was being sweetened with grenadine and lengthened with a splash of soda water. Wondrich even describes it as a pre-prohibition dude's drink. Sign me up. All right, that's enough history. Let's get started. First up is a quarter of an ounce of simple syrup. I'm using Demerara syrup that I made myself, but you can make this at home by combining plain old granulated sugar and water. Next is a quarter of an ounce of grenadine. There are a bunch of quality grenadines you can buy out there, but be sure to avoid any with high fructose corn syrup on the ingredients list. I made this one by mixing pomegranate juice with sugar. Super easy to do, and it'll keep for a long time in your fridge. We're following that up with half an ounce of lemon juice. You're going to want to go with freshly squeezed if at all possible. Trust me, you can really taste the difference. And finally, an ounce and a half of gin. I'm using Green Hook Gin Smith's American Dry Gin from right here in New York City, but you can use whatever you have on hand. That'll do it for now, so let's add some ice and give it a shake. Glassware for this is a highball glass, but you can use a pint glass or whatever you like, really. All right, let's strain our drink in there. I'm holding back the ice we shook it with to make sure we can get the whole drink in the glass. And now that the drink is in there, I'm just gonna add a few of the ice cubes we shook it with. You can use fresh ice if you're feeling fancy. Now we're gonna top the whole thing off with sparkling water. go. Now let's drop in a big glass straw. I love the gradient of colors here, but let's give this a stir and have a taste. Mmm, that is so good. It's bright and refreshing. The grenadine adds some nice sweetness, but it isn't cloying and really lets the gin shine through. I could drink this year round. And no, I'm not just saying that because it's October. Well, that does it for to, uh, uh oh, okay. What's happening now? Doing a double feature back to back, baby. Oh boy. All right, I guess we're gonna whip something up here. Not exactly sure I like what's happening right now, but uh, I guess we're gonna see where this is going. Looks like we're starting off with a bar spoon of simple syrup. All right, seems innocuous enough. Huh, okay, some orange juice. Looks like it's about three quarters of an ounce or so. Now for some lemon juice. Three quarters of an ounce again, all right. And more gin, Ford's London Dry, a personal favorite of mine. Looks like an ounce and a half of that. Is that right? Put in way too much gin. Just start over. It's too late for that. I guess we're pressing on here. Oh, and some Campari. An ounce and a half's worth, interesting. So this is kind of turning into a mutant version of a Spumoni. Now let's strain this Franken drink into our beautifully iced glass. Hey, there's a fall tie-in. This is a seasonally appropriate video. <laughs> now let's top this bad boy off with some tonic water so we can wrap up this video and enjoy the nice healthy buzz I'm clearly feeling after shooting like five of these videos in one day. All right, let's give this a taste. Huh, okay. With all that Campari in here and just a bar spoon of sweetener, this is of course much more bitter than the last one. It doesn't taste bad by any means, but the proportions are a little out of whack. Honestly, this was fun, but I'd say just follow the real recipe for a spumoni that's on the screen now. Well, that does it for Highball Summer. I've had a lot of fun working on this series. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Let me know what you drank over the summer and what's been on your fall home bar menu. Thanks for watching. Cheers.